Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Uh, in this video we're going back to a job I did a while back which is replacing a hard drive in a 2008 Intel iMac. Now this is my niece's machine and she's been complaining that it's uh, it's been slowing down for quite a while so I thought well better have a quick look and see what's going on. So I did a few tests, bit of monitoring on the machine and it all seemed fine which is very bizarre but uh, come this morning and the machine's frozen solid can't do anything with it and the hard drive is just clicking so it looks like a bit of a strip down and uh, we'll pull the thing apart so as you can see here I've got a, a Torx T8 I think it is and I'm removing the screws around the outer frame of the iMac shell, the aluminium shell. You have to use a window sucker to pull the screen off first on these models as they're magnetized onto the aluminium frame. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 screws around the perimeter. They're all Torx and they're all quite small but any decent toolkit should have the necessary screwdrivers to do this, or Torx drivers as the case may be. Now as I said before, the hard drive in this machine I changed about six or seven years ago. Uh, I think it's it was an IBM hard drive, whoever makes IBMs now. I want to say, who is it? Deathstar, anyway, whoever it is. Uh, it was a brand new drive, a one terabyte drive, and I think the original iMac drive was 500 gigabyte or something. So I've changed it, and it all worked well. It's it's worked well for the last eight years, but unfortunately, it's decided to pack in. The drive just clicks. The Mac doesn't see it. I've taken the drive out, as you can or you will see shortly, and it's not recognised by another machine. So unfortunately, it's dead as a doornail. So anyway. Uh, with all the screws removed you can very carefully lift the aluminium case here as you can see you have to be careful of uh, one wire which is by the camera at the bottom of the screen and this is actually for the microphone that's the only wire that goes to the aluminium case oh yeah and don't forget to remove the RAM cover so as you can see the wire there now when I unplug that the one thing you can't see is that the wire actually broke it's pulled out of the connector and split the wire as well so that's another little project uh, so with the cover off you can sort of get to the workings it's a dusty machine as you can see it's uh, it's had a lot of use it's used every day this Mac and it's been on non-stop for the last eight years so it's done pretty well the LCD itself is held on by um, screws all along the perimeter edge so obviously you have to remove these first there are one, two, three cables or ribbons to remove on the underside of the LCD. So obviously you can't just take the screws off and rip the panel up with gear abandon as uh, that just won't work. So lift it up carefully. Now as I say, it's eight years since I've been in here and I'd forgotten where the ribbons are. I knew they were there, but I wasn't quite sure where they go. So the perplexed, the perplexed look I have is me casually looking about the place trying to see where the screws go uh, and where the ribbons go obviously now one of the ribbons is screwed on as you can see me undoing there the other two I just pull off it's no big deal so with those off I should be able to lift off the LCD I oh, know actually here I'm removing two little screws from this uh, ribbon that fits to the motherboard not quite sure what the ribbons do but uh, obviously one will be display, one will be power not sure what the other one does ambient light, it does all kinds of things These, this uh, this fitting that goes to the motherboard is a particularly small Torx fitting it's the smallest I had which is a T7 and it doesn't actually fit, it's probably in truth a T6 but uh, I had to use what I had
with the screen off, um, you can see what is essentially uh, a laptop. We have a laptop motherboard. It's not a laptop, but it's very much of a similar sort of configuration. Two exhaust fans, DVD drive, hard drive, and a power supply. Now the power supply is the bottom of the screen, the hard drive is in the middle, and the DVD drive is to the left of that. The hard drive itself is held on with a big black sort of press clip, really. Um, as you can see, I'm hoovering the machine out here. It's not something I usually do. I'd normally pull it apart, get a brush on there, and uh, give it a damn good clean. But uh, I'm a little bit stuck for time today, so this is uh, a little bit of a rush job, unfortunately. But it should be okay. Uh, like I say, this machine has been used non-stop for about eight years. The last time I saw it was when I gave it to her. Uh, so the last time it was cleaned was when I took it apart to put the hard drive in originally. So I've got eight years worth of crud and filth. But in all fairness, it's not too bad. So right, so you can see the hard drive in the middle of the machine there. It's a SATA drive. It's a one terabyte. Uh, I think it's a Death Star. It clicks. It doesn't work. I'm not sure I'll be able to save any data from this. But as long as she's updated um, all her details to iCloud, when I reinstall the machine with a clean drive, we should get all the information back on from iCloud. Fingers crossed. And hopefully she's backed up her phone recently and all the all that sort of palaver. But uh, she's pretty good, so I'm expecting good things. Yeah, it is. It's a Death Star. Uh, yeah, so this drive is essentially a scrap now. It just clicks. You could uh, send it away to get it repaired, or at least send it away to get the data retrieved, but who cares? It's holiday photos, emails from work, all that sort of stuff. Um, it's not that critical. I will try and have a little play with this, see what I can do, but in the meantime, all I'm going to do here is popping a spare hard drive I've got, which is a 2 terabyte drive. Now this terabyte drive I have had issues with. Um, actually I'm not even sure I'm going to put this in. I might put a 1 gigabyte drive in it. Again, another spare SATA drive I have kicking about. It is, um, whilst not brand new, it is fairly new and has a very light usage. So it should have many more years in it. These SATA drives are much better than the old drives that we used to have years ago. They have much more memory inside them. Uh, cache, they call it. So hopefully it should improve performance a little bit. So what I'm doing here is trying to take the rubbers off the plugs that are there. You screw the dowels into the side of the hard drive. There's two on one side and the black clip fits on the other side. And once the um, once the post is sticking out of the drive, you can shove on, shove on the uh, rubber outers that will stop vibration. Push the clip down and the drive is fitted. The little bit you can see there under the foam is a, um, a heat sensor. Um, and this is what the Mac uses to monitor the temperatures inside the machine. There's two of them that you can see. Well, one that you can see, which is obviously on the hard drive there, which I'm having a bit of trouble sticking down. But there's one under the DVD drive as well. Whilst I'm in here fiddling about, I might take the DVD drive out and have a little look see what's going on. This DVD drive, whilst it works perfectly, seems very leisurely, as though it sort of, I don't know, reads twice before it can make a decision whether the date is any good or not. So what I might do is take it apart and clean the lens, uh, if I've got the screwdrivers to do this. Whilst I used to have all this kit at hand um, to pull these machines apart, I don't really do many Macs anymore. So the screwdrivers I used to have at hand have disappeared in drawers and cupboards and various things, and I don't know where they are. And that's the problem I'm having here. I don't have a Torx fitting small enough to get in there. So I'm going to give it a quick blowout by hand, as you see, or by mouth. Stick the uh, heat sensor back on there and we'll leave it alone. I know it works. It might be my imagination that it takes longer than it should do. One thing to be wary of when you're working on IMAX is the tinfoil sheet that you can see there that covers the back of the machine for the for anti-static and radiation and noise and all the rest of it. It tends to um, get a little bit flaky on the edges when you start messing, messing about with it. 
and what that does is it tends to cover holes or move out of position or fold over on itself and it can cause problems especially with the DVD drive because it can obstruct the slot for the DVDs now I don't use DVD as much anymore but there's always that occasion where it's quite helpful to use it especially on these old Macs because they don't they don't have the option to boot without a hard drive as the new Macs do on a new Mac you can put a blank hard drive in there, fire the machine up it'll ask you to input your Apple ID, connect to iCloud and it will reinstall the OS for you, copy all your details all your software um, well not all your software but all your details, your photos and all your Apple related stuff will go back onto the machine. It's very easy, it's very simple, it's very convenient actually um, but the old Mac is very much like a PC if you remove the hard drive well that's it, nothing happens so here I am reconnecting the machine uh, reconnecting the LCD rather the connector I'm trying to connect there is a little bit fiddly it's um, it's basically a push on connector it has two screws at either side but it's, very, it's a little tricky lining it up and I'm just checking here with my camera what's going on making sure the ribbons are in the right place clip down and what I'm going to do now is pop a couple of screws in probably corner to corner lift the machine up, make sure it boots, finds a hard drive and hopefully boots, um, well it won't boot into anything, the hard drive is blank I think, but I can format the drive whilst it boots from the DVD player I do have a couple of copies of uh, OS X kicking about f precisely for this kind of thing, I think I've got some really old ones now, I think one's Snow Leopard and one's uh, Mountain Lion I think but they're good enough to get machines up and running then you can connect to the internet and download uh, Mavericks or Mojave or High Sierra or whatever operating system you wish you can download them from Apple free of charge so like I said we'll just put a couple of screws in now make sure the LCD is secure plug it in and see what happens now hopefully it's all good well good news we have success um, I've plugged the hard drive in, rebuilt it as you can see, um, put a screw in the corner and the machine boots up. I can get uh, the operating system loading from DVD and we have formatted the drive and it is ready to install OS X. So what I'm going to do now is turn the machine off, rebuild it properly, make sure all the connectors are on as they should be, put some screws in that's missing and um, then we'll have a play, set up the operating system, update everything as we can. I think the highest the machine this machine will go, which is a 2008 or 2009 model, is probably El Capitan. This is a dual core uh, I. No, it's not. It's not an I anything. It's a three gigahertz dual core or call to duo, whatever the hell it is, I don't remember whatever the 2008-2009 model was, the highest, the top of the range, 3 gigahertz that's what it is and it still works surprisingly well yes it's a little bit sluggish um, but it does work reasonably well so I'm going to leave you now watching me bolt this thing up I'll put some pictures on the end of reinstalling OS X and that's pretty much it uh, the pain in the neck part of this whole process is reassembly. Pulling it apart is quite easy. Reassembling the machine is not so easy. Doing the mechanical stuff is a piece of cake. But cleaning the LCD, make sure there's no spear marks, no thumbprints, no bits of dandruff or dead skin on there is quite important. You don't want any stray hairs or bits of paper sticking out on the LCD. So it's important that you clean the LCD when you finish screwing it all up and then you clean both sides of the glass panel that goes on now the reason I say both sides is because if you clean one side and put the screen on so the LCD is in place and the outer glass screens on if there's a mark on the front of the screen you can clean it away and you think oh yeah that's good uh, but if it's on the other side of the screen other side of the glass then you've got to take the glass off again so it's important to clean both sides of the glass before you put it on that's my little recommendation and that's what I do so anyway thank you very much for your time I hope you have a very good evening and uh, I'll see you in the next video
Thank you. Bye-bye.